Hello, and thank you for connecting with us. It is less than a week before Christmas now. It, it's almost here. And there's one thing during the Christmas season that is important to us as a church family, and that is the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. The money, the offerings, the gifts to the Lottie Moon offering goes to supporting missionaries around the world who are taking the good news about Jesus to people of other nations. Um, we had, last year, we had a missionary, William Hahn. He and his family serve in a West African nation. He visited our church, and we have a real treat because in just a minute, we have a, a Christmas greeting from William and his family. And if you'd like to make a Christmas gift to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, you can drop it off here at the church. So let's check out their greeting, and we'll be back shortly. Hey, First Baptist Church Mantino, it's William Hahn, your IMB missionary to Ghana. It's been a while, but you may remember me. I came and spoke at your church about a year ago before the pandemic uh, up in Illinois. My name is Heidi. I work as a surgeon here at the Baptist Medical Center. Hi, I'm Trey. I'm in ninth grade and I like to draw and unicycle. Hi, I'm KJ. I'm five years old. I like to... Ride bike, I like to play, be tinned, and play tent. 2020 has definitely been a crazy year, but we've seen over and over how gracious our God is. Our time in the U.S. was wonderful, but after three months of being stuck due to the pandemic, we were really anxious to get back to West Africa. Thankfully, God provided a way, and in September, we were able to come back, and most importantly, come back COVID-free. When we got back to Nalergu in the end of September, I jumped right back into the work at the hospital and doing surgeries again. With pandemic, we've had no volunteers coming from outside Europe or the US since March. So I've been relying heavily on the Ghanaian doctors and staff to help me out. And God's grace and strength have given me the ability to persevere. Trey also jumped right into his work. As Soon as we got here, he got his unicycles out and he started teaching his friends. And now he's just got a little club of clowns riding around. Dad, you know clowns and unicycles is a bad stereotype. Street unicycling is an extreme sport, and it's really cool. Okay, fair enough, Trey. KJ also has a new group of friends. She rides her bike every day to a kindergarten class where she meets for a few hours and has made lots of new friends at her school there and loves it. So we wanna thank you for your ongoing support of missions, especially in a difficult year like 2020. Your church's support of the cooperative program and your giving to the annual Lottie Moon Christmas offering is really what allows us to be here and continue our ministry, preaching the gospel and healing the sick. God bless you all and Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. So each year as I read through the Christmas story, this true story, the nativity, the coming of Jesus, I am reminded of things and I even see sometimes things I haven't really picked up on before from God's word. But there are things that absolutely amaze me. And one of them is the fact that 700 years before this happened, Micah in the Old Testament, Old Testament prophet of Micah, he mentions Bethlehem. He prophesies Bethlehem would be the place for the birth of the Savior. I want to read that verse to you from Micah 5.2. It says, But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. 700 years before it happened, Micah prophesied it exactly right, that the king would be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem is significant too, because around that area of Bethlehem, there would have been shepherds out in the field taking care of their sheep, keeping watch over their flocks at night and day. And some of those sheep, interestingly, would have been sheep that were brought to the temple and used as sacrifices when people brought their sacrifice and gave it to the priest. Some of them would have been the very lambs and sheep that they were raising 
And here we have the Lamb of God born in Bethlehem. So the shepherds being involved in the Christmas story is significant. And I want to show you a video for just a couple of minutes. It's from a shepherd's perspective. And then we'll go back and read the story in Luke chapter 2. When I was a kid, there was this one day I was troubled about something. I don't even remember what it was. My father noticed and um, he comes over to me and he places his hands on my head and he says, Shalom, son. Do you know what that means? Yes, I nodded. I said, I meant peace. Then my daddy, he, uh, he knelt beside me and he took my face in his big calloused shepherd's hands. And he said, yes, peace, but more. And then he put a finger on my heart and he said, Shalom, God's highest and most complete good be upon you. That is my prayer for you, my son. He left his staff with me and I've looked for it, what he mentioned, shalom, all these years. When the angels came, there was no hint of wind, no clouds, just stars, so many stars. He showed himself to us <laughs> suddenly. And there was an angel brighter than stars who spoke and said, do not be afraid. I have good news. Your savior has, your savior has been born. And he lies in a manger. And then quiet as if the whole world is waiting to breathe. A savior, God's highest and most greatest good for us, for me. And then suddenly, multitudes of angels shattered, shattered the silence, saying glory, glory, glory. God is on earth. His peace on earth. My father's prayers, I've seen Finally, shalom, peace. So I had mentioned that there are things about the Christmas story, the nativity story, that amaze me every year. And sometimes there are things that come up also that it's like, wow, I hadn't really thought about it that way. And I want to read you one of those from Luke chapter 2 and take a look at the very first verse. And scripture says, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Okay, so we, we kind of knew that part, that Caesar issues this decree, a census must be taken, and Joseph and a very pregnant Mary travel to Bethlehem, and that's where the baby Jesus was born. But think about this, because I, I had not really. If, if Caesar had issued that decree six months earlier, 
then the baby Jesus would have already been born in Nazareth and they traveled to Bethlehem with a little child. Or, or if Caesar had issued that decree six months later, then they would have gone to Bethlehem and come back and baby Jesus would have been born in Nazareth. What amazes me is the timing of it. When Micah prophesied 700 years earlier that these things would happen in Bethlehem, it wasn't just Joseph and Mary that somehow got the timing right as if they could stage that or something. World events and even Caesar himself of the Roman world, what he did played perfectly into the timing of the prophecy being fulfilled and of the baby Jesus being born in Bethlehem. That amazes me. This nativity story, it seems like each year of my life, it just keeps getting better and better, and it is the most amazing good news. So Bethlehem, it was significant. It was a very small village, and the outlying area of Bethlehem, there would have been shepherds out in the fields keeping watch over their flocks. And it's interesting because some of those sheep that they were watching would have been used for the Old Testament sacrifice at, at the temple when people brought their sacrifice and gave it to the priests. Some of the sheep they were raising would have been used for that. And, and right in the middle of that, the Lamb of God, the ultimate, the true sacrifice, the only one that can really take away sins is born right there in the midst of them. I want to read to you Luke chapter 2. And it's, it's kind of where the shepherds fit into this Christmas story. And there's an important reason why. I'm picking up in verse 8. It says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. I think you have a pretty good reason to be terrified if an angel appears to you in the night out in a field. Because remember, it's dark. There's no street lights. There's no building lights. There's no automobile lights. It is dark. Angel appears to them. It says they were test terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who believed it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. I love that last phrase. It's just as they had been told. Just like the angels told the shepherds, just like Micah prophesied 700 years earlier, all of these events fit together perfectly just as God planned it. And the shepherds are important because, again, I mentioned that they're a lowly um, group of people watching over their animals. <clears throat> and here they're being told about the Savior who was born and placed in a manger, kind of a lowly, humble beginning. But we need to focus on this good news. When the angel said to them, don't be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy. This isn't just good news. This is, in the Greek word, it's magus. This is magus news. It's where we get our word mega, which is huge or giant or amazing or just big, big news. The birth of Jesus and later his resurrection is the biggest and most good news story of all humankind, of all human history. And here, as it's happening, as it's playing out in Bethlehem, the angel comes to these lowly shepherds and tells them about it. 
Now, I think the shepherd's response is not one of like, oh, that's pretty. They're, they're like, they're looking at each other. It literally said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, this magus news. If you look up that word and see its use in the New Testament, here's, here's magus. Here's this good news. It's abundant. It's all the more. It's big. It's huge. It's completely um, one translation he uses fierce. This is just a huge news story, and it's a good news story that the Savior has been born. It's huge good news that transcends everything else. I read earlier this week that Christmas time in December can be a tough time for a lot of people. It can be a time of despair. It can be a time of hopelessness. It can be a time of unrelenting pressure that causes emotional anxiety. Some of that may be from life situations. Some of that may be from a hopelessness or things going on around the world. Some of that could be the stress of decorating for Christmas or Christmas gift shopping and trying to get that right or people coming and going and traveling in and and on and on it goes. But in the middle of all of that is the huge good news that transcends everything else, that the Savior has been born, the Messiah, the Lord. Actually, in Luke 2 and verse 10, where this angel says this to him, that use, it's, it's, if you look up that Greek word again, it's used of intensity and of its degrees of the affections and emotions of the mind that the birth and the coming of the Savior, of the Messiah, is huge good news for the human mind. It's huge good news for the very seat of human emotion. And as Christ followers, it's good news that we believe and we trust in, even when there's been bad news in the world around us, or even when there's been stress in the world around us or uncertainty. These angels bringing this message to the shepherds wasn't just for the shepherds, because look what they did. It says that the shepherds, they said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. And then when they had seen him, it says that they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. So the shepherds, they get this amazing visit from an angel They go and see this magus good news that the Savior has come, that he's been born. He's lying in a manger in Bethlehem. And what did they do? They went and told people about it. They went and told people what had happened. And it says that people were amazed. I mentioned earlier the Han family serving in West Africa. And we have friends, the Wallace family serving in East Africa and missionaries in other parts of the world. And they are doing the exact same thing these shepherds did. These shepherds kind of set an example for us to go and see this for ourselves personally, this good news, this truth about Jesus, and then to take what we've seen, what we've experienced, and share it with other people and share it around the world. You know, I hope today that the birth of Jesus is good news in your life, that it's good news for your heart and for your mind and for your emotions. And and I pray this Christmas season that if you've never trusted in Christ as your Savior, I pray you would accept his invitation to believe him for who he is, to trust him for who he is, to ask him to be your Savior, to know that you can be forgiven of all your sins. This is the gift that Jesus has given us. And and our gift in return, the very best gift that we could give him is our heart and our life. He is Savior and he is Lord. And I pray that we are like these shepherds in celebrating this week. Yes, I love the lights. Yes, I love the candy canes. Yes, I love opening a gift. But bigger good news than all of that is I love the baby Jesus lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes or literally strips of clothing, not a rich family, actually kind of a more of a, a poor family on the spectrum. And here's the Messiah. It is Magus news. And he invites you today to be part of this, to experience this in your own life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the good news, for the Magus news 
that Jesus, that the Savior, Messiah, Lord has come and been born. Thank you for sharing this good news with us. Thank you that we can experience this personally. And Lord Jesus, as we celebrate this week, that we place all of our hope in you, all of our trust in you. And we know that our strength and our joy, we know that our eternal life, it comes from you and your finished work from birth to death and one day resurrection. It's Magus news. So Lord God, I pray this week that we are focused on you, that our hearts, our minds, and our eyes are on Jesus. We worship you and we pray in his name. Amen and amen.